Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our finale episode of Constellation by Story Archives. I'm your host, Mario Busto, alongside a newly, freshly located Zachary Newton. Welcome back. Zach, you confused yeah. me when we turned on this recording today because I saw your similar cabinet back there. <laughs> my first my first response was, what the hell are you still doing here? <laughs> huh? What are you still doing here? Yeah, uh, I thought I might have been talking to Quantum Zach, who never moved from your previous location to your new location. But it turns out it's it's still same reality, Zach. Um, how yep. you doing, man? How's how's the move going? I see you finally caught up to the show. I want to first before we ask you all about you, I want to thank the viewers for being patient. I love seeing the uptick of uh, of new listeners, of new followers subscribing to the show. We were a little more delayed than usual. Quite understandably so, because Zach literally had to relocate his entire life in the span of three days. Yeah. And I realized as I was going to, about to prepare to do a solo pod to cover him while he was gone, uh, I realized that this was the finale episode. Uh, somewhere around uh, the moment where Joanna uh, pulls the iPad from her face or whatever she had in front of her face and we see her no eye, Mm. Uh, I realized, oh, this this is the finale. Actually, I realized it a little before that. I would hope for, you realized it. That was like the last scene. <laughs> yeah. But for a dramatic effect, I just wanted to say that as the moment. But yeah, uh, yeah uh, we're here. We're doing the finale. And I did not record the solo because um, this is the finale. And it just would have been weird to do a quick reaction to the finale followed up by another episode with Zach. So Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. I can't. The one time we don't check the number of episodes in the show, because Apple almost always does 10 episodes in a season. Well, I think we were misinformed. I think we, I think we, we just, or maybe we just assumed that it would be 10 or 12. I think we just assumed, honestly, because every show we've covered on Apple, except for Masters of the Air, has been 10. Masters of the Air was nine. Now we're getting an eight episode show. Dude, I Um, got to the 30 to 30, 35 minute mark in this episode, and I was like, what are they leaving for next episode? Like, what's <laughs> what's what's gonna happen? Like, this is they're really going far here with all yeah. this right now. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it turns turns out there will probably be a season two. Um. I got April Fools'd so hard yesterday on oh, Twitter. Boy. Uh. Somebody dropped some fake news on April Fool's Day. Uh, they said Severance was returning in June. Uh, it is. It is in fact not returning in June. It is returning and in you October sent that to me too or November. Yeah. I'm sorry. Some I got April Fool's gun. on that one. Yeah, it wasn't uh, cool. And he never said it was an April Fool's joke either. It was just like, just news. But wow. Uh, yeah. But there's a lot of stuff apparently in production. Supposedly, Silo is damn near done in production. That, but I, Dude, I could excited. be wrong. I really I could, hope so. I, I want season two to come out. It's like the yeah. one science fiction show my wife will watch with me. Well, speaking of science fiction shows, uh, I'm getting a lot of positive feedback from a certain science fiction show on Netflix called The Three Body Problem. Mm. Um, I also saw a like a raving review from this uh, video game developer or designer, game director, Hideo Kojima, who made Metal Gear Solid. And he was raving about uh, Three Body Problem, uh, which is uh, apparently adapted from a novel. It's the creators of Game of Thrones, uh, David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, who are much better at adapting than they are creating their own original material, as you so... Uh, first-hand experienced as all, we all have uh, the last couple of seasons of Game of Thrones when they were just working off of George R.R. R. Martin's <laughs> bullet points. And now they're back to their bread and butter, it seems. And uh, yeah, my dad has told me that he has not been able to sleep because he's just staying up late binging the show. And uh, it's it's disrupted his sleeping. Uh, and he's pr- he's a pretty good judge of shows. So when he gives the stamp of approval, I, I very much pay attention to it. And I, we've got a couple listeners out there who've, uh, I think Jerob, uh, reached out also in addition to his Man in High Castle uh, recommendation. He also highly recommended Three Body Problem. And if I watch the first two episodes and I'm in, then that's the next show. So you guys are probably going to get that after Constellation probably this week. Um, I'm still watching Tokyo Vice. And I'm I'm deep in One Piece right now. But, you know. One Piece. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's a that's an anime. Yeah, I know. You got to throw yeah. the anime out there. I'm well, rewatching Avatar The Last Airbender. I feel like I'm always like in some watching. I'm like very far behind in One Piece. So please, please no spoilers. We have a small community. I don't think they'd do that to me. But uh, 
But yeah, I'm I'm like on episode 260. There's like a thousand episodes of One Piece. So I'm very I watch that like as a marathon. Like I, I will eventually finish One Piece. <laughs> but I started I started last year and the journey goes on. But nobody tuned in for One Piece. They tuned in for Constellation. So let's get into it, Zach. What were your first thoughts on the finale uh overall impressions? And then we can get into some of the nitty gritty of what went down in this I mean- episode. My first thoughts on this was, wow, what a change in pace to, you know, everything else that we had. It was like this, this entire episode to me just felt like this weird, like, I don't know, like liminal space. I'll throw that word out there since they threw that one at us, where it felt like we were kind of getting closure, but then at the same time, we weren't really getting any closure. It was just like, okay, I, I, I guess that's how this is going. Yeah. And then you get halfway through and you're like, oh, it's just a setup. Okay. Got it. Yeah, I was happy it was a finale. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Because there were moments in the last two episodes where I was getting exhausted at the constant setup for the twist or for the new bit of information that we were going to get. And there was moments in this episode where I was like, I just want progression. I want to move forward. I want actual activity. I don't want thinking about what the activity means or Mm -hmm. about what happened or what's going on. I just want to move forward. I want some catalyst. I I need some action. And um, this episode I thought was a a great finale. I wouldn't put it like on the pantheon of of my favorite all-time finales. Um, Not even close. But that's not a knock on the show. It's just that this this, this type of show is a unique type of show. It's doing, it's telling a different type of story. And um, it's, I think, also going to be presenting all sorts of hypothetical scenarios that are going to be highly polarized in terms of like, uh, I was talking to someone the other day and she brought up the, um, what's that problem where you have like a pool, there's like a train coming and it's going to run over four people and then oh, yeah, there's... Yeah, you can switch the track that it's on okay. and we just kill one person. Yeah, and then you find out like what would you do in that scenario and then they switch it on you and they say, what if it was your daughter or like somebody you loved that was the one person? Yeah. Um, and then the other or the other four people were criminals or something like that. I don't mm-hmm. know. They switch, the scenario switches in all sorts of different ways. I feel like we're going to start to get some of those scenarios in this show. For example, you have Joe who very much, you know, she has a daughter in both worlds, similar mm-hmm. to Paul, who is alive, Zach. So I'm sorry you uh, you swung for the fences on that on that <laughs> bet, but uh, you did, you went one for two. Well, and one so, of them is dead, at least. Yes, but we always knew that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Joe has this conundrum of, is she going to be a good mother to the daughter in this universe, or is she going to be a good mother and try to get back to the one in the other universe? Yeah. She also has a new conundrum now where she has a baby Who's both? Who's from both universes? Pretty much at this point, right? Yeah. Uh, so, what happens to that baby? What like what is the uniqueness of that? Um, and just this overall dilemma where you have Bud who switched back to his original world, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and Henry who's now going to go to prison for something that he didn't do. Um, seemingly so, right? Unless yeah. Paul drops all charges on him for some reason. Which I could easily see happening. I could, I could easily see that happening too. I mean, yeah. this is the guy that's got all the answers for him and he's not going to be able to really... Well, I mean, I guess maybe he could talk to him if he was in jail, but I mean, it would be very difficult to talk to him during the process and he might not want to after you've put him in jail for the rest of his life. All three seem to have one thing in common. Or maybe all four if you want to include Arena as well. A traumatic event had to occur in order for them to switch instances mm-hmm. right so for Irina, it was literally dying for joe we thought it was her dying but now we get the bombshell drop of her possibly being alive in some form i can't imagine that she's actually organically alive in space yeah. with an eyeball being sucked out of her head um but she did grab the ipad and i don't think that that was a, a metaphor i think that she is in some weird way alive um mm-hmm. Paul died and he switched over and then Bud shoots Paul, which causes him to switch over. Yep. Right? Um, so that's, that was sort of like an interesting thing. So it makes me wonder, 
what traumatic event's going to happen now to Joe for her to switch back over? Or is she never going to switch back over? Is she going to just accept this existence and stay on this side of, of reality? I am really not quite sure. And I don't know what her waking up at the very end of this means. Uh, Cause I don't think she's truly alive. Like, I mean, there's oxygen in that ISS, right? Like her body should have been decomposing first off, which is a little weird that it hasn't yet, even is though she there, is a is there gaping oxygen hole in the ISS. I mean, is there not? Like, I mean, how else are you going to breathe in it? Well, how else are you going to be alive with your eyeball sucked out of your skull? Well, that's my point exactly. Like, it's, it's so do it's you a need oxygen weird. in that scenario if you're just like kind of? But that means you're not. That means you're not really corpse. alive. Like that's why it's like really bizarre. You yeah. know, the show. The show also. Man, every now and then, like I get glimpses of of this, like just taking a left, like or a right turn. I don't know, whatever. Uh, and you know, turning into like a horror show. Uh, it, like yes. it, it's got the touches of it. Like the very end. I mean. Yeah, definitely. Jo- Joe's. Moment. It's not just Joe's eye that's ripped out, dude. It was like half of her head was like comp- like yeah. a fucking hole in it. <laughs> yeah, I I just conveniently glossed over that in my memory. I don't know why, but I I couldn't remember that until you just said it. Um yeah, it's just endless questions of of what happened. Look, Bud takes an axe to the cow, which I did mention in the previous episode. I wrote in my notes. I said, mm-hmm. "Can someone just destroy this shit? Like just just take like break this thing in half. Like we yeah. don't know what it is." It does lend the conversation to, you know, what's going on in society nowadays. Like, is there a limit to how far we should push technology, right? Mm-hmm. Right? I feel like that is a conversation that we're, we're getting closer to, right? How yes. far should we take AI? How far should we take robotics? I don't think we'll ever stop because humans don't stop. Because if you do stop, you always Somebody are going to have else. a party who, who continues. And therefore, you got to stay and stay yep. competitive. Right, so we're gonna take this to the brink, maybe to the end of our civilization. But uh, I don't actually don't believe it'll be the end of the civilization. But um, but nonetheless, the question can be posed, and you can kind of think about it. Right. So yeah. the cow, Henry does mention that although he didn't shoot Paul, he thinks he did kill him because he sent him up to the ISS with the cow, which for sure. Caused some sort of wormhole that bridged realities up there, which is why the Valia came drifting out of space and hit the ISS, right? Mm-hmm. But but do we still don't know if the body is what caused that whole commotion, do we? Could that have been the only thing that caused that giant commotion? It's a, Just a- it's a great question, though. Like I, I kind of think it is, but I mean, there was only one floating body up there. So like, yes. Yes. did she like hit the ISS and then flip to the other reality and then hit the ISS again? Or what, I don't know, maybe there's like a little tiny like asteroid pebble or something that flew and hit the, hit the glass of the ISS. I'm not quite sure. What's really creepy is that like the show insinuates that something is deeply wrong with going to space as a human. Mm-hmm. It deeply insinuates that. At least from Arena's perspective, from the Marine Observatory perspective, when they said there's something wrong with space. Yeah. Right. It creeps me out because it makes me wonder, and I haven't done any research off air, which will probably might get a snarky review. I says, yeah, I got to prepare more. Um, <laughs> but who knows? You know, are astronauts having these sorts of, not obviously these experiences, but have there been instances of astronauts that come back from space? that have anomalies that they witnessed or things that occurred that they mentioned that they didn't have any sort of history of prior to going to space. I, that I don't I think have you no know, idea. but no, we I don't, look I into don't it. know. I, the only, the only thing I've ever heard um, is that, I mean, sometimes you'll come back and you'll have issues with your vision uh, or obviously like you're, you've got to rebuild your muscle. Like you're going to have to do some PT because you just don't have, like you're not up there exercising at least the same way that you are down here i know like there's plenty of astronauts that exercise there's things for them to do up in outer space but i mean you still are floating in zero g so uh, you're gonna be a little weak compared to when you went up i would assume i had a random question in this episode because bud wakes up in the snow so he Mm -hmm. just like fell asleep in the snow i don't know how i didn't freeze to death exactly uh 
Secondly, he was out there with a platoon of police. <laughs> okay. And uh and high level government officials. Mm -hmm. Right? Who the heck they just left his ass out there in the snow and, and just didn't nobody searched for him. Nobody said, Hey guys, we got an elderly gentleman who's in charge of a very important uh program uh that very much potentially caused uh this issue. Uh why don't we look for this guy before we just leave? Well, to be fair, I don't think most people knew anything about this program or the Cal or anything like that. Uh, but I do find it a little suspicious that you're with a bunch of police and you're just kind of left out there. Like, I, I'd imagine the they car. took inventory. Did everybody yeah. make it back? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, we're all here. Yeah, there was no Home Alone. Uh, no. Kevin McCallister Kevin. left behind. Him. <laughs> yeah, none of that. Uh, Joe finally goes to what we've been waiting for, which was the rehab clinic. And it honestly was a little bit anticlimactic, but she did have a procedure done. In the midst of the procedure, the way it was edited and cut together, it did seem like the cowl was broken mm -hmm. at the moment she was having the procedure, which I don't know what effect that has, but her brain scans uh, looked strange, although I'm not an expert on uh, neuro brain scans. No, me neither. I don't quite know what it really meant either, right? Like I was expecting almost like I was expecting her to die when uh when Bud went to go like hack the cow apart. Like I I I I thought like maybe that would like sever her connection with this reality and like shove her back into her body, which is actually dead. And then maybe the other Joe would come back. Like I expected some funky stuff like that to happen. Mm -hmm. Um but it didn't quite happen. I don't know what on earth happened. Like, did it did it make this switch permanent? But then, how, like, I don't think it could I, ever be I permanent. Almost, I read it almost as that, is that it might have, I mean, at least I considered the thought that what if breaking the cow made this thing permanent? But I also saw in her either her brain scan or the sonogram they did on her, I noticed like two beans. Almost like two circles. It was. I think it was the ultrasound of the baby. And to me, it was like, what was it? Twin? Is it twins, or is it that this baby has a dual reality? You know, because yeah. this baby's. So she's I feel dead like the baby's the new she's, cow. Well, she's dead in the other reality, right? Yeah. So, in all instances that we're flipping back between these storylines, we're seeing two versions of two different people, mm -hmm. right? Or of two versions of the same person. But for this baby. There ain't no there ain't no Joe to have him or her in the other reality. So this baby only exists in one reality. So it's the only probably being that exists in one reality. Right? Hmm. So that's gonna be a huge mind F in the second season. I don't even know if that like that has to be the thing. Like I just feel like anything that exists could have an alternate here or there. Um, but but what's also but it tricky, is really confusing. Yeah, go ahead. What's also tricky is if she now goes back to the other reality, she ain't, she had another Magnus's baby. So <laughs> now she didn't have a baby with her Magnus. She had a baby with the other Magnus. It sounds like a you. It sounds kind of like an affair to me, but. <laughs> <laughs> Try explaining that one to your husband. Maybe a loophole. Maybe, <laughs> but the thing is, is that like you still remember this Magnus and her were on the rocks, right? Mm -hmm. Relationally speaking, the other one her had a peachy, you know, peachy marriage, right? Mm, yeah. Uh, so that one's getting screwed both ways. It's not his kid for real, and that's a hor this is just a horrible scenario. This goes back to that damn train track running over four people thing is like yeah. at what point is she so invested in this reality that she just says i gotta stay here you know yeah i mean i i, I kind of feel like she's at that point but there's there's something inside of me that just makes you feel like i'm still anticipating now that we have our heads wrapped around to to some degree what the hell is actually going on and the fact that there's two universes and you know that oh things can overlap you know at certain yeah. times in certain spaces i feel like now that we've kind of got all that set up done there's going to be some like investigative thing to figure out how to get back and i feel like that's where we would probably pick up at least in a season two with joe um but i also 
you know, kind of going back to the way that this episode ended, where the Joe that's in outer space just decided to, and I knew the moment, like, every, like I knew that was going to happen at some point. Uh, but when she like kind of like wakes up, if you can even call it that, uh, and grabs the iPad, I wonder if that means that like, did did the Joe on Earth take the pills, and like, did that? mess with something that do something and kind of like shove her back into her own body for a minute or are we seeing i guess the other joe that was cheating on magnus wake up in dead joe's body it's the only way i can distinguish it live joe and dead joe well the one who's dead is the one that had the affair on magnus correct the the one that is how do, how do i say this the one that is uh, God, why is it not so, like, physically dead? It's like mentally dead, right? Yeah. Like it, it's uh, not not your spirit, your conscious. The, the the one whose conscious is dead, conscience, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. Uh -huh. I'm not. I'm not using the right word. But yeah, that that's the one that cheated on Magnus. So you're saying you knew that Joe was alive in the station? I didn't know. I don't think she's alive. That's the thing. But you I said just, you, you knew I it was knew coming. I knew like her twitching or doing some shit oh, okay. gotcha. up there was yeah, coming. Yeah. Like, you, like there, we, there's no way we were gonna have all these weird ass shots with her just like floating like a dead body, looking out at Earth, just floating from behind, not doing anything, floating with her eye open. Yeah, I'm they like, teased right, it. What's gonna happen? They definitely teased it. Oh yeah. Um, Magnus and Alice return home. Um, they're moving now. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they're moving in both realities. Were they? No, it's just one, I believe. So they're moving in the reality that she's in the mental clinic. Oh, no. They're moving in the reality where she's dead. Yeah. Right? Yeah, physically dead. Yeah. Physically dead. Yeah. Alice breaks the news to Magnus that their version of, of Joe is dead, which understandably sounds insane still. Yeah. But Magnus admittedly in therapy mentions that he could have swore he saw a glimpse of, of her. Like his mm -hmm. version of her, right? Yeah. In the snow, which sounds and also sounds insane, but he did, right? Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about Henry for a bit. Okay. He, Bud did shoot Paul. You were right about that. Yes. Thankfully. For you. Thankfully, Paul's not dead. Um, which puts me in a very, if you're listening to this pod for the first time, we, we do wagers. On shows, Zach is currently like on a on a zero and two losing streak at this very moment. Uh, but at, at various times he was like on a two zero win streak. So the the tables do flip. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is gonna come down to the wire at the end of this episode as to who won this wager, who's getting the prize. Um, Paul's alive. Henry is answering for the crime of shooting Paul, even though he didn't do it. Bud did. Yeah. Does make me question if Bud intended to actually target Paul, but I guess he did. I uh, thought maybe, I thought it was going to be a warning shot. But no, I, he, he shot I him in the gut. No, like I, this, this whole Bud Henry situation, like I get why Bud, in the reality we've seen him in every episode, but at the end of last episode and this episode, I get why he's like such a bitter person. I mean, he was successful sure. in his younger life. Mm -hmm. He did everything right, and he basically gets screwed and ends up being body switched or whatever you want to call it into into a reality where everybody on board with him died. He became like the loser and laughing stock of the world, like the biggest embarrassment to NASA and probably all of space travel, and just had a really shitty life after that. Granted, I think part of that's just on him, but. He seems well, a little yeah. less bad. In there this were reality. moments in this episode where he did seem less bad. And I, I wouldn't just write him off as evil. I think he wants nothing to do with the cow at this point, right? Um, he got switched over bodies. Mm -hmm. He put in an existence where he came home as a failure very much, right? Mm -hmm. uh, not known at all. Uh, people talk crap about him, like the, yeah. the tour guide, Ian Rogers. Who's now a Jack the Ripper uh, tour guide, <laughs> um, and I was really concerned there that Bud was just going to be like a, a space traveling universe traveling murderer. 
who's just killing people. <laughs> I always have it a minute like, wait, is he Jack the Ripper? Like, is he from the he past was. or something? Like, I was wondering if we were going to get some weird time thing uh, with like Ian or, or Bud. I wasn't quite sure, but nah, just just live your best life. That's got to be the meanest meanest trash talk you could ever <laughs> say to somebody is going up to somebody and being like knowing knowing that you literally killed them in another universe and like that you got away with it and you're just going up to their ulterior version of them and saying live your best life huh and he literally gave him the the mafioso kiss he kissed him on both cheeks and everything <laughs> like he was just what a piece of crap butt is right it's, it's funny though but like he's the only one that could get off on that because i mean ian has no clue like yeah. i like i feel like very few people even know that there is this alternate reality there's this copy of themselves <laughs> with their dna that twists just slightly in the wrong direction or something but i feel like in that moment ian did know because if he's any somewhat connected which, by the way, brings to question that something perhaps is deeply wrong with space in actual all actuality, because we've talked about like the bridging factor is traumatic events that make these people switch universes. Yeah. But it's a pretty traumatic experience to get killed in another universe, I would assume. But Ian Rogers didn't go to space. So I'm assuming the space is also the, the connecting factor of if you can switch over to a different universe. You get me? <laughs> I get you. I don't think it's limited to space, though. I just think it happens more frequently in space because Bud wasn't in space when he switched back. Uh, you know, he he shot somebody. Yes, he yeah. was in space in the past, but he wasn't uh, this latest switch. Uh, but, you know, I I was just wondering, like, you know, if Ian Rogers in the reality that Bud was in the majority of this season... Uh, you know, was, you know, interested in space travel and, you know, doing interviews and proving and disproving theories and things like that. He probably did the same thing in the reality that Bud is now in, the one that Henry had been in the whole time. And I would assume, uh, and did assume at the very least, that he was made the laughing stock of everything. And so he retired and quit because he, he recognized Bud. But I feel like he recognized... I'm pretty sure he recognized Bud because he made some comment about like, oh, I quit it or I gave it up or whatever or something like that. Oh, see, I and, didn't catch that. And and so my interpretation of that is that, you know, just just like uh, Bud had become a failure, uh, Ian, Roger, Ian Rogers in this reality had probably become a failure and gave up uh all of this like his investigative claims. journaling and, and all of his claims and everything that he had been doing and now he's just a jack the ripper tour guide interesting interesting which by the way i don't think we've ever gotten like a good jack the ripper show have we i've never seen one i feel like that would be a good like murder mystery um if somebody did like a, a historical drama could, could be a historical drama thriller i feel like that would be a pretty interesting show Maybe we'll get one. I mean, we've got Apple diving back with I think, all of I these th presidential shows and everything else. I think there was one, but I'm blanking on the name. But I don't know if it was like a, an acclaimed show or like there was a cult, like a cult following for it. Um, but yeah, you're right. Apple is going very much back in the past now. They have a ton of stuff in production, man. Oh, I gotta crazy. send. I gotta send you the chart. I gotta bring it up in another uh, podcast. Okay, so in the clinic, Ilya comes and visits Joe. Uh, who's the Russian cosmonaut who's mm -hmm. ni a nice guy, but he's kind of getting the Soviet pressure here, right? Or the Russian pressure here to uh, kind of remind, he kind of reminds me of a For All Mankind character, to be honest, the way he acts in this episode. A little um, bit. Because it seems very much like if he doesn't follow through and deliver the company message or the, you know, political message here that he's something bad's going to happen to him because he's like very discreetly handing her a key or whatever he handed her to mm -hmm. go upstairs and check out whatever the hell the noise is above her, which turns out to be the first Russian astronaut that went to space and is somehow the same person. There's two elderly men, they call her mama, and um, very creepy stuff. I don't know how they're both in the same reality. Well, I don't think they're both in the same reality. I think it's one person there. I just think- Joe can see both? Joe, was it? Yeah, I think she was able to see both. I, I, I've been having like these, these weird- um, 
I, I guess I haven't been having weird things. I, I, I've been thinking periodically throughout this season that Joe might be some sort of bridge between the realities, uh, and anybody that switched realities or something may be like a bridge between them. Um, I'm not sure how confident I am that that is the case, but I do think that there really was just one person there. She was just able to see both versions of them. Yeah, yeah. What did you think of the the man first man in space? Like, what what's what's your thought process there of what potentially went down or went wrong? He seems, seems like both versions of himself are alive. Yeah, like I was Henry. gonna say both versions of him seem to be alive. Um, I I don't really know. I mean, is this like the guy that may have seen and heard a bunch of like angels singing and stuff like that? Maybe. Um, I mean, we got that little glimpse from the. Uh, from the boat, <laughs> uh, at least yeah. some of the stories of it. I'm not, I, I, I wouldn't know. There wasn't really enough there other than just enough to make us understand that this has happened since people have gone to space. <clears throat> Going to the theme of, of leaving things behind, accepting the reality that they're in, Alice and Joe both kind of grapple with that as the oh. only ones in the room, at least in that family, who know what they're going through is real. They both somewhat decide to accept each other in this episode. But Alice does receive the box of tapes from Magnus, who's pretty mm-hmm. clueless. Like, I mean, if you're, your cabin is burned down, your daughter had like a traumatic experience in your eyes, I'm assuming you'd investigate what's in each box and you wouldn't <laughs> hand her back the radio that is like the, her very <laughs> core of her obsession. Um, not that he knows about the radio, not that he knows about the tapes, but maybe if you read the tapes and you see what they are they are written on with huge marker, mm-hmm. uh, you probably wouldn't give that to your daughter who you're trying to get back on the track that you think is correct. But yeah, um, Alice does make the decision over time to ghost uh, English Alice, ghost Swedish Alice, as I wrote in my notes. Uh, but she does have those tapes and we just do have these things that are occurring. For example... Her realization that Irina is the Valia, which we all knew as the audience, but mm-hmm. uh, which would have been a killer um, twist if they just left that for the end of the season. But <laughs> you, yeah. you were denying that they were the same early on in the show. Always no, I always, I always said that the Valia no. was uh, the cosmonaut. Go I said back if and the listen to the tape. You, you must have an alternate reality of the recordings we we made. I'm telling you, I always said the portrait behind her was. Um, it was her. I had the orange suit. I said it like in episode one. I said it. Or two. Go back. You go back and listen to it. I'm, I don't, I'm I don't positive I said it. I'm, <laughs> posi- I'm positive I said it. I'll go back and, and listen to it just to prove you wrong. I'd do it. <laughs> um, or maybe an audience member will. Um, okay. Fisher Price, major product placement. You think they paid for all this product placement? You know, it's an Apple show, so I feel like anything that's not made by Apple or has a scrubbed logo probably paid for some ad placement on this. Like, Apple's got all of the lawyers in the world. <laughs> yeah, we, know, we, know, we know about that. Oh, yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, we're going to use Fisher-Price. Hey, Fisher-Price, we want to wanna use yeah. your product in our, in our TV show. We'll pay you. What do you think of uh, the DNA being the same between Henry and Bud? Would you, were you expecting different? Because he Henry put on a hell of a case for himself, right? I think that Henry's probably correct. I think that that Henry the knows DNA is wrong. Uh, yeah, the DNA is not I, the same. I think he knows. I just think this the change is so slight and so subtle. I don't know. Maybe they're like, maybe we just flipped the image, but the pattern is still the same. He just said it like curved off in, to or he, like spiraled in in the opposite direction or something like that. He said it with such confidence to check the DNA with yeah. such confidence. That it gave the impression that he knew something that nobody else knew, right? Well, he knows about both realities. He, th- th- there's a very high likelihood that he had tested his own blood at some point or had it tested and realized like, oh, that's different than what it was before. Yeah. I'd say one of the most key things that occurs in this episode is the fact that Arena, when all her stubbornness changes her mind on her stance of how to approach these anomalies that are occurring. Uh, fresh off dinner with uh, Bud, who she immediately knows is not Henry. Mm-hmm. Uh, she makes the confession to Joe that, yes, what she's experiencing is real, but that her the best step is to move forward to just accept it, which she kind of goes uh, back on because at the end of the episode, we see her drafting an email 
for people to anonymously give her tips on if they've experienced any sort of anomalies since returning from space. Yeah. So I think the next season probably goes towards Irina uh, taking a more vocal stance, maybe behind the scenes to figure out what's, what is up with space travel and what the hell is up with going to space that is, that is having this crazy effect on people. Yeah. Do you think there's like some group of people that just knows what's going on? Or do you think they're all just kind of like scared and trying to manage themselves as they uncover the realities of some of these things or just the insanity of some of it, honestly? I think there will definitely be people who have crazy stories that figured out a lot on their own and they will be introduced as characters similar to like the Marine Observatory people. I think you'll also hear kind of dark stories of people who kind of lost it completely uh, with nobody to turn to or whatever, and um, that they were alone in it, right? Because Joe's very blessed to have all these people around her yeah. that, she can t- that she can, you know, who are sharing a similar experience, right? Yeah. Uh, but not everybody else is having that sort of scenario, specifically Paul, uh, you, which we don't know if Paul switched you know consciousness again at the end when he wakes up in the bed that's yet to be i'll tell you um, what though man if he did that would be terrifying as hell because he's buried under the ground yeah oh my gosh that would be horrible bro. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i feel like i would have uh, more more violently grabbed the arm of somebody that i saw if i was just hidden in the pitch black oh my oh gosh. i'm missing a hand oh i woke up and i'm now in the middle of nowhere which is interesting though because i was wondering as well towards the end of this episode if if perhaps both uh both of them switched both uh paul and joe switched back to their original bodies i just don't I don't see that being the case. Like, I feel like maybe they each got a glimpse of their alternate self. Like, because Paul, when he woke up, he was like, oh, I'm seeing something or, oh, I saw something. And he's like looking at his hand as if he just saw that it was missing. Um, So I don't know if he just like got a glimpse of something. And then I don't know if maybe, maybe Joe now just got a glimpse of, of herself in space. And maybe that's what we saw. Maybe it was not like a, her really alive up there I, was just, I don't know some weird like brain connection thing well but she has that one line that she says my eye is always on you where she yeah. says that to alice yo can you go to fast forward to when paul wakes up because i believe he says something and yeah. I, I don't recall what it was i think you just said it but i want to see the scene real quick when he does wake up i think it's the second to last thing we see before we see joe uh potentially maybe i'm working on it Uh, here we go. Right around minute 48, 21 seconds in. Should have some subtitles on. Let's see what we got going on here. Paul's laying in the bed. She goes, I see Paul, Paul. Paul, let go. I have seen something. That's what he says. He says, I've seen something. He looks at both of his hands. Yeah. As like if he, as if gone. he, as if he wasn't expecting to have both of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Paul switched back, man. I, I don't think, think he switched back, dude. I'm mean, come on, like for real. His body's or, been buried yeah. in the ground for a while. <laughs> like, or you what you, or what you're saying, yeah, that he had a vision of what happened to the other Paul. Yeah, I would, I would put my money on on him having a vision of yeah. what happened to the other Paul, based on the way that this show has gone throughout the yeah. um, this entire season so far like everything that happens feels more like a like a like a distant vision like something that you think you saw or something like that like i think i remember seeing this yeah can i just say that uh this clinic that they have joe at is in a gorgeous location i mean they always are it's crazy did you see the mountains and just the the lake behind it it's it makes beautiful. me want to go crazy well, thanks for joining us. <laughs> uh, no, but, but seriously, I, beautiful place. Uh, that just about wraps up everything that happened in the episode. I don't know what more there is to discuss, but we can kind of like talk about what could be coming in season two. I honestly have no idea other than the remaining problems that Joe and Paul are in the wrong universe. Uh, now Joe has a baby who's going to be like a universal a universe. It might be Doctor Who. Maybe this is like a prequel to Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. Uh, just going through different universes and eventually time traveling. 
Yeah. Um, but in Henry, that saga with Henry probably going to go to jail, uh, the continued crusade for Irina to figure out if any other people have uh, had similar instances occur to like happen to them. And then this mysterious Joe who's in space with half her face ripped off who grabs the iPad. Which is somehow not dead. The yeah. iPad. Which is, I mean, I have an iPad and it dies after, you know, a couple of days. Yeah. Well, no, well, Apple's obviously marketing their long-lasting battery life. <laughs> that or, or perhaps... Uh, we're see like the what we see in the very end of this episode happened at a different time, like maybe shortly after Paul left the ISS, not when uh you know Living Joe is in the mental ward. It could have been that. Well, they, that explains who the heck unlatched the the escape pod, pretty much. You know, but but does it? Because I think, it, I think be, it does, but but Joe's in one reality. Her dead body's in one reality. Don't forget, both Joe and Paul had someone unlatch their pod. Yeah, but these universes are somehow connected because in the scene that Henry, um, in the scene that Henry um, shoots Paul or Paul, Bud shoots Paul, mm -hmm. Henry is also being handed something or he grabs something in a different universe and he reacts in the moment that it occurs pretty much um so i think there's certain key pivotal moments that these universes kind of collide but that's my theory but anyways well i mean i agree with with that like I, I do think there are weird moments where things collide it's just anytime i feel like i've seen it maybe with the exception of the body hitting the iss I yeah. just, I don't think it's ever been like the same action. So yeah, I hear you. It, it's a little, I think All it's right. unanswered. <laughs> Let's get into some uh, categories and then we'll close out the bets on the season. Um, and then we'll say goodbye to Constellation and look forward to whatever our next series will be. Probably That's... three body problem. Well, I mean, the way that you've been raving about it, probably. Yeah, uh, yeah, I do maybe. still think that you need to watch The Man in High Castle though. Uh, uh, you're, okay, we'll talk about that later. I mean, I got to watch the next episode. Okay. Uh, favorite character of the episode? Hmm. Hmm. It's a tough one. All I know is it's not Ilya. Yikes, this is tough. Isn't it? You're, like, you're kind of tired of picking tired. Joe. Well, I don't even think we've picked her that often this season. I'm gonna Bud? Go. I'm going with That's Bud, a fair man. One. Bud, Bud is good. I I might go with I might go with Alice, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with both versions of Alice because I feel like like there was some interesting development or you know maturing uh, that happened with the. Uh, the characters there. I enjoyed uh, even, watching Bud acting as if like he's the invisible guy who's robbing banks. You know, like <laughs> he's just he's got no consequences. You know, well, yeah, he has no consequences for the action that he <laughs> actions yeah. he made in the other universe. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, no, I just I liked that. I, I feel like I got the most closure with Alice in this episode, which was interesting. So she's a little, very mature. That. She's very she mature. Very for a little mature. girl. Heck yeah. All right, let's uh let's go with favorite scene. Uh probably the very end of the episode where we see Joe grab the iPad. That's probably the thing that's going to always stick with me. In this <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing that's going to pop in your head in the middle of the night when you're trying to sleep tonight. Um yeah. I It's not one scene. I kind of liked uh like the mental ward that Joe was in, it was. I mean, not only was the location just phenomenal, mm -hmm. um, but there was a lot of interesting things that happened in there. You, you had her seeing the the first man in space. 
Ilya came over, then, then you know, Irina and Joe were talking, and you know, that, that's when Irina kind of like starts to change her mind, or, so or maybe not change her mind. Yeah, ba- okay, like, you're basically, half like, the episode it's, for your first season. It's hard, bro. <laughs> It's uh, it's hard to narrow it down on on one se- on one scene specifically. Okay. Uh, if 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 I had to pick like one single scene Moment. for it, which which I probably would, it <clears throat> it actually probably would just be Alice talking to Alice. I think for me it would be Alice talking to Irina, where she says, "Uh, my name is Blah, but my friends call me Valia." Yeah, I thought that was a pretty cool scene. But, down yeah. the rabbit hole. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Speaking of lines, what was your favorite line? Probably that one, the the rabbit hole, Alice, or something like that. That one was good, but my my favorite line was Bud, "Live your best life." Oh yeah, for sure, that's a good one. Yeah, that's good that was one. pretty epic. Well, that's all I got for the. Uh... Oh, how about Alice when she says, "If you're from there and I'm from here, where's the baby? What world is the baby from?" Like that's a. That's gonna be like. A big That's gonna theme be the season, in season two, two, thing, two man. for sure. Yeah. Like, it, it's gonna like I'm sure we're gonna have sprinkled in stories. Of, <laughs> you know, we're gonna have just enough stories come in to help everybody continue to piece things together. But yeah, the big thing is gonna be what the hell is happening with Joe in outer space? Is she alive? Is she not? How is she gonna get down? Is she gonna start calling from outer space? I have no idea. This uh, this very much feels like a two season show though. <laughs> Like, I, w- I, I honestly, I almost wish it wasn't an eight episode season, and it was just a few more episodes. Like, like four I, episode I more. wish it maybe two to four. Uh, if this episode was not what it was, yeah. um, I feel like we could have closed this show out. It depends. In ten we episodes, we have, we have no idea what their twists are. You're th- we're thinking of what we know now, but something it's could true. come out. Of course, it's of of course it could. Yeah. But I don't know that I would want it to. Like yeah, I was, same. I was thinking, of, yeah, I was thinking I about know. this when I when I was watching the show earlier tonight. I'm like, you know, one of the reasons why I love like war movies and war shows is because it's it's one story told. You tell the story and you're done. 1917. You tell the story and you're done. Band of Brothers. You tell the story and you're done. Saving Private Ryan. You tell the story and you're done. But stuff like this, it is interesting. Like I like the show. Don't get me wrong. But I just don't like to see it drag on and on and on for so long. And that's that's always been my personal biggest issue with a lot of TV shows is because it becomes such an investment over time. Like it, it, it uh, some shows I don't even want to start because I'm like, there's too much to watch. Mm. I recommend One Piece for you. It's only a thousand episodes. Well, I used to watch NCIS. And now, like, like I watched, I used to watch NCIS. 40 seasons of NCIS. And I watched the first 10 seasons of NCIS. Like, I, like, I, when I was younger, um, I used to, aside from wanting to be a medical examiner, which after learning that you had to go to school for like 12 years, then an apprenticeship for like another 10, I was like, yeah, frick that, no. Um, but I was going to, going to go to, to become a, a, a naval criminal investigative agent, um, that was that was fun, and I I loved the show for a that long should, time. That should tell you everything about Zach, ladies and gentlemen. He wanted to be a crime scene. Uh, he wanted to be the guy. He wanted to be Dexter. He wanted hey. to go to crime scenes, which you know, <laughs> I never I never did like heavy forensics or anything like that. But when I was younger, I did uh I did take a class with a college professor where you know we got like a he he'd like hand you hand you a skull. And you had to break it down to determine is, is it male, is it female, um, you know, what race was the person, how did they die? That was really fun. Guessed all of that, right? And uh, along with some other, uh, well, I say guessed, I mean, there's ways to figure it out. Um, and then we had some other like scenes that were set up, um, laid out from like real murders or, or real um, mm-hmm. crimes that, that happened. And we got to kind of like piece it together. It was really fun. Um, but anyways, no, like I used to love NCIS, got 10, 10 seasons in, I fell off because I don't know, work or whatever. And I just, I literally saw on TV or walked past it in a store the other day. And I'm like, there's like 27 seasons of, or yeah. something of, of NCIS. Yeah. And then there's yeah. NCIS LA and like two other spinoffs. I'm like, holy crap. The only show that's allowed to have more than 40 seasons is, uh, Guy Fieri's, uh, Hey, that's a good Dive, one. Diners, drive-ins, and what is it? Dives. Yeah. Dives. Heck yeah. I well, love that. 
as your co-host and, and business partner, I'm slightly horrified of what your earlier career choices uh, perhaps could have been, but <laughs> you know, we'll look over that. All right, let's get into the wagers. Uh, who won that? <clears throat> All right, let's do it. So, the one that we know you won is Zach thinks Bud killed Paul in episode six. Mario disagrees. It's a shame that I didn't win that one because if I won that one, I'd get two points to your one. I know. I know. It's a fucking shame. Uh, the next bet, uh, which I did win, is Mario says there is three or more versions. And I say no, there's only two. And there is only two. Well, technically, there's a liminal. Bro. I didn't say versions. I said realities. R- realities. We, universes, we've been using these words interchangeably. But there's not three. You have to think of it as two circles. You have universe A and universe B. And when they get close enough and they start to overlap, you have this liminal space in between. But there's still universe that's, A and universe B. That's not, that's not that's universe C. It's, it's not a third. It's not a third. You, it's an overlap, bro. If you have right, a, a Venn diagram concede. with two circles and they cross and they overlap, there's still two circles. I'm going to concede it for now, but it, uh, that could come back to my favor. If it, look, if it comes, two. if it comes back to your favor in a season two, this is going to be like this is going to be like Max Verstappen stealing the title from Lewis Hamilton. This is what this is going to be. But you got it. Point for you. You're going to hate fine. that I don't even know the names that you just threw out there. So that's um, fine. Someone will out there. The final bet for this season. You look a little smug. I don't like it. <laughs> uh, it was just Irene and Bud. Irene and Bud slash Henry mm-hmm. were on the same mission in space, and Irene was one of the crew members that died. Mario says yes. I said yes. Zachary that. says no. Oh, you won, you bastard! I did. I won. I. But did we, honestly, did we get confirmation that Henry was not? What did he say to her at that dinner? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> was Henry? You. Was, we were looking at, at this earlier because I think you you took the other the other odds on on that one. Um, and it's funny because this entire show, until I just read that out loud, I thought I was the one that said they were on the same mission. So I'm so happy that that. It's not the case. I can't. It's going to take too long to find it's, it's fine. if she was on the mission. I won. But it does feel like you won. I, I, and I, you've I, broken I your win. two or three show losing streak. It's It's been two. It's been I think two. It's, hold on. You lost Invasion. I'll, yeah, you I lost, lost Invasion. And then the last one that we did, which was... Masters of the Air. No, we didn't do one. We didn't do one for Masters of the Air. Of the air. It was, it's, not a, it's not a show that you can really do that for. Or you what just owe me cover? foundation? You lost foundation, probably. No, I think I actually won foundation. I can't remember. We're missing, I know a, I show. Lost We're missing yeah. a show that yeah. we covered. We covered so many recently. I'm like, I'm forgetting what when we did. The oh, did Monarch we... Legacy Godzilla. Monsters. Godzilla. Yeah. 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 There we go. Yeah. That was the one. All right. Well, Heck hey, yeah. You got one. All I'll right. send you I'm, I'll I'm send happy. you some. I'll send you some high noons or, you know, just, you know. I appreciate out. it. I appreciate it. I, I literally <laughs> thought I had lost this one the entire time until I read that last <laughs> so question did, because so I had I. it in my head. I'm like, damn it. I'm the one that said that, <laughs> uh, that they yeah, were on the I same mission. I, I'm pretty sure that was my guess that they were on the same mission. It, it was because um, I, I wrote this stuff down like March 19th or something like that. Or that was the last time I edited yeah, it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, all right, hey, cool. Man, c- c- congratulations. Thank congratulations. you. Yeah, I needed a win. This this you week's did. been a busy week. Yeah, yeah you, needed you needed it. And 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 my birthday's holy shit. Oh, it's, it's after birthday? midnight. Okay. Uh, it my birthday's tomorrow. Oh, hey man, happy birthday. Well, I Thank mean, you. well, tomorrow technically. Yeah, technically, technically. like the, yeah, the technicality yeah. of it's midnight now. Yeah, yeah. Hey, well, happy early birthday. And Thanks. by the way. Thank you all for tuning in to our series coverage of Constellation. We hope you enjoyed the ride. Uh, we hope you, you actually tune in to our finale episode, even though it's a little bit later than usual. We hope you understand um, that because we love putting on some entertaining shows for all of you out there. If you want to stay up with everything we are doing on the channel, we are posting our Peaky Blinders series on YouTube still. We're going to be getting to the end of that um, sometime this year. Uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a jab at Zach. 
but he's been very busy. So um, we'll let him get away with the slow postings of Peaky Blinders. Uh, in addition to that, um, we are also going to be taking on a new series, probably The Three Body Problem on Netflix. And if not that, then um, we'll keep you posted. But it is highly looking like it may be that. I'm also watching Tokyo Vice. I'm beginning season two there, so you might get some sort of bonus episode there. And um, that's all I got. As always, if you like the show, make sure to subscribe, like, review it. Five stars always helps. And if you want to email us your theories, your final season's thoughts, or even some show recommendations, you can email us at contact at soapbox.house. Is it time for my outro or did you do it? Yeah. No, it's your outro. You should have gotten all right. a few there. Well, I lost Wi-Fi, you know, joys. Of, I saw uh, that. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I was I'm like, on yeah, hotspot really now. Still. Yeah, I, I've been, I, I've been trying to get my internet working all day, so it's kind of, okay, gotcha, kind of finicky. Gotcha. But anyways, thank you for listening to this episode of Constellation by Story Archives. You can find this podcast anywhere you find podcasts, Apple and Spotify podcasts primarily. You can visit us on YouTube at Soapbox Podcast Network. Visit a website at soapbox.house. Email us at contact at soapbox.house. And as somebody so kindly pointed out in an email to us, you can sign up for our newsletter haha, uh, via the link in the uh, description below. So thank you. Perfect. Perfect. All right, guys. Until next time, take care.